Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Stellaris. Because we just got a brand new bit of DLC, First Contact, which is primarily about fleshing out your interactions with pre-spacefaring civilizations. That's pretty damn cool, but as is so often the case with Stellaris, though that might be the headliner, to my mind, it's not the most exciting new toy we're getting to play with today. Oh no, they've just added a whole bunch of awesome stuff in. So, step one, we've picked up a bunch of brand new Origins, and, uh, oh, these are good ones, because uh, when we first got the Origins, they weren't particularly interesting, to be honest. They were very minor twists on a, a standard start. Mechanist, you start with some robots. Syncratic Evolution, you start off with two populations, uh, not one. Life Seated, you get to start in a Gaia world. These are very modest remixes of uh, a completely normal start. But as time's gone on, we've got ourselves some more and more interesting origins. Ones that give you way more variety in how you start, and way more narrative and roleplay potential. And what's particularly fun about the new origins we just picked up as part of First Contact is, uh, all of them ask a variant of the question, what happens uh, if you were the ones who got First Contact? And so, uh, in Fear of the Dark, one of the planets in your Empire starting system was exploded at some point in what many people believe was an alien attack, meaning a third of your entire starting population isn't part of your Empire. They've just gone and set themselves up on an isolationist planet elsewhere in your starting system, and you've got to basically figure out how to deal with them, as well as the other aliens you encounter, while trying to solve the mystery of why exactly that planet did explode back in the day. In Broken Shackles, meanwhile, your starting world isn't even your original homeworld. Your civilization is the result of an uprising on an alien slavish ship. So, yeah, basically, you and all your newly freed friends just settled down on this world and made the best of it. So, okay, on the plus side, you've got a whole bunch of different alien species on board. That's great for expanding, but on the downside, technologically, you're miles behind. And, uh, fun fact, somewhere out in the galaxy, the people who originally enslaved you are still going to be floating around. And uh, who's to say they might might not want you back. But here's my favourite right here. This civilization's been visited by an alien empire who forcibly enlightened and enslaved them. You've repelled the invaders, but will they return? So you start off at a huge disadvantage. You've got way fewer pops than usual. Technology miles behind. Your former masters are still out there somewhere, possibly going to be interested in coming and having another go at some point. But you've got one thing going for you, and that's the wreckage of the alien flagship that you can examine, salvage, maybe even return to working order to work for you. Where your ultimate goal, of course, is hunt down your former oppressors and make them cocking pay. So basically, we've just done the plot of Independence Day, and now it's time for some cocking revenge. So say hello to the Human Independence Forces, led by President Bill Pullman. And yes, because I actually have this origin, straight away, I get plus 50% damage to militarily superior empires. But that's nowhere near enough. I've also gone and set this empire up to be basically as militant as it can possibly be. Fanatic militarist, so there's another 20% fire rate. Toss in a distinguished admiralty, that gets me another 10%, and my admirals are going to be tip top as well. Plus, citizen service. Bonus naval capacity. Lovely. So yes, basically, we're going to start off with a pretty significant disadvantage, but we should be able to punch significantly above our weight when it comes to wars in space. And uh, yes, as for my plans for my former oppressors, let's just say I've got something very particular in mind. And as for traits, I've gone for rapid breeders because we're 10 pops behind, we need to bloody well catch up. And uh, intelligent because we're behind in tech, we need to catch up there too. Paid for by, yes, taking deviant and sedentary because honestly, the penalties for both are very, very minor indeed. So welcome to Earth, which is, yes, not doing desperately well right now in various ways. Like you may notice immediately, the giant debris field caused by if we just uh, pan up slightly, a huge destroyed MSI warship that's, yes, causing a lot of trouble right now for the planet below. The planet is just littered with ship debris and more and more of it raining down to Earth is, yes, causing all sorts of problems. Habitability on my own starting world is not as good as it should be. It is expensive to build buildings and even more expensive to try and keep the bastards running. 
We don't have enough housing to support our current population, even though our current population is, yes, smaller than it should be. We can't even feed our own population right now, and everybody's so annoyed about all of this that crime is starting to creep up too. So, yes, this is not a good position to be in. You may also notice a few things are missing in the outliner over here. So, we do not start with a science vessel, or a construction vessel, or any fleet whatsoever. And on that last point... I don't even have the technology to make corvettes right now. I cannot field a fleet, so, you know, kind of just cross your fingers and hope you don't run into any nasty neighbours immediately, because uh, I am literally defenceless. So, plenty of problems, let's sort them out one by one. Step one, get a signed ship out immediately, because without a signed ship, we can't go exploring. And every moment we're not out in the galaxy exploring and expanding, everybody else already is. So, yeah, we need to get out there in a hurry before all the good systems are taken. And step two, we need to close the tech gap. So, I do start off with a one set of research labs, but right now, I can't make any more. So, probably best we get working on that. Meanwhile, Jeff Goldblum is going to help me, yes, get some ships out into the world. So let's get those researched. And as for sociology, oh yeah, pop growth speed, we need to bloody catch up in a hurry. Okay, I've successfully built a science ship, but uh, fun fact, it's going to take me six months to save up enough unity to recruit a scientist to man the thing, meaning it can't actually, you know, do any work right now. So, okay, sociology is temporarily cancelled. Um, you're going to be, yes, just hopping into the ship right now. Yes, I know. I know there's literally no research happening, because apparently we only have three scientists on Earth right now. The rest were kidnapped by our former masters. But seriously, it's bloody important that, yes, the ship just gets into action and starts scanning the local area to see if we can find some good resources to scavenge. Okay, right now we can barely get to the warship because it's surrounded by dangerous debris fields. So, uh, step one, we need to get that out the way. Not least as uh, that will be very, very good for the planets. Okay, step one, deploy a lovely construction ship to, yes, the area around Earth, and then we can just get working on that. Beautiful. Looks like it's going to take me, yeah, about two years to sort out the debris fields. Though at the same time, yeah, devastation caused by the Independence War, that's going down. We're repairing down on the surface. So, okay, housing has now recovered. That's looking a bit better. Okay, space cleanup is going very well. One year till that's done and we've got our first tradition. And uh, tradition trees these days, oh, I'm loving where they are right now. Which is, yes, at this point we're now up to 16 different tradition trees, so you've really got to think carefully about which ones are worth filling a slot with. But for me today, it's the classic. Discovery. We need to get out in the world as fast as bloody possible. So, yeah, anomaly research, survey speed, all the rest of it. And that also gives me, yeah, map the stars. Survey speed plus 25% as part of my edict fund. Get on with that. Bloody hell, let's get, yeah, two science vessels out at this point. Just get them scanning, figure out what's in the world. Oh, and there she flipping goes. The sky is clear, and that should mean, yes, our economy just explodes as soon as everything updates up here. Oh, now that's more like it. Profit, profit, profit across the sky. Beautiful. Which also frees up, yes, my construction ship to start working on, you know, doing some constructing and now that Earth is safe. So get over here, build some research stations. Three extra engineering at this point in the game is, uh, yeah, basically like 10, 50% bonus to my entire engineering output. Beautiful. And as for the alien mothership, we can now get to it, meaning it's effectively an archaeological dig site. Send a scientist in, start investigating. Okay, Earth stabilized, science vessels doing some good scouting. We can now, yes, dig into a bit of a more traditional start in Stellaris as we start just building up the Empire in preparation for, you know, putting together the Doom Revenge fleet. But okay, just in case you're very confused right now, Stellaris may look a bit complicated, but actually really when you get down to it, it's quite a simple game, which is it's a game of two halves. Step one, you've got planets. Your population, for the most part, lives on planets, and while they're on planets, they do jobs. 
Here we go, this lovely chappy is a metal worker, meaning he produces alloys, advanced materials that we need to get out and explore space. Because basically every spaceship is put together out of advanced materials like alloys. Out in space, meanwhile, you find lots of raw materials. So just around the corner over here, we have got ourselves, yes, a planet that generates six minerals if I just go and claim it as mine. And of course, the planet can only hold so many people. So, you know, go and find more planets, send people over to them. Life is good. That's basically the long and short of it. Go out into the galaxy to find raw resources, use raw resources to feed planets. Meanwhile, planets, they're the economic heart of everything. Like, it may all look a bit complicated if you don't know this game, but at its core, it's actually pretty simple. And speaking of which, I wouldn't mind having access to those six minerals. So send a construction ship, build a star base. There we go. That's going to be mine. So for the time being, I'm just on my own in space. I don't know where everybody else is, but yes, as I say, out there somewhere, various aliens who might like me or might not, and my former masters who almost certainly bloody don't. Okay, basic expansion has begun, and we're just seizing control of a few nearby uncontested mineral-rich regions, but we've got news from the enemy mothership. Our sensors don't detect life within the derelict warship, yet the engines still faintly buzz, machines are at work inside the empty halls. There's good reason to believe it's still operational, and attempts to board it are sure to awaken security. So, uh, yes indeed. As time goes by, there's a very good chance we might have to make some difficult decisions about sending in some of our own people to investigate up close, and uh, some of those people might end up dead, I'll admit. Okay, the Empire expands, we're making good money here, everything's nice and stable, but uh, here's where things get a bit more real. Up at the north of the Empire, we've got some friends. You are your Lithoid. Okay, that is a Lithoid ship. I know nothing about these individuals, I cannot really communicate with them, so... Okay, work in progress. I've sent one of my diplomats in, we're going to try and understand each other. But right now, yes, we know basically nothing, it's gonna take some time to do. Difficulty seems high, suggesting they possibly don't want to be contacted. And in the meantime, given we're scanning the same system up here, yes, we might be in a bit of a race to lock down this bit of space, and... Uh, I want this bit of space, because I can't help but notice there appears to be some form of a ruined megastructure built around a cocking black hole. So, yes, that's pretty exciting. We're going to be wanting that, actually. In fact, you know what, buddy? As soon as you're done with that, start expanding in this direction. All right, looks to me if, yeah, we can lock down this bit of space here or this bit of space here. We can cut these guys off from accessing any of this. But right now, I don't know how nearby those guys are to me. Oh, and the situation with the Lithoids is going to get more complicated yet, which is, yes, one of the two systems I wanted to lock down is currently occupied by hostile mining drones, I'm pretty certain. So, okay, those are just neutral guys. I don't need to worry too much about them, though. That does raise the question. How did you get through here? Probably just by ignoring them, to be honest. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. You, buddy. I need you to not worry about them for the time being, no. Stop panicking. Just go into passive mode, please. Uh, ignore them and come down over here and scan this bit of space, please, all right? As long as you don't get too nearby to them, they shouldn't attack you. We can just bypass them, no trouble. If I can, yeah, lock down this system, we still get all of this and... Okay, there might be more aliens nearby. I'm getting a lot of uh, there are now aliens nearby warnings. Oh, and this I completely missed earlier, by the way. So, yes, cleaning up the various bits of debris that have been raining down on my planet, that's actually... That's helpful. Because it's advanced alien technology. So, I just cleared a patch, got me a giant pile of unity, helped speed up my old, uh, yeah, tradition progress, and uh, alloys. You know what? We're swimming in money right now. Clear all of the debris. All right, salvage all of it. Okay, making good progress with the warship. We are cleaning, repairing, securing rooms. Seems to be going pretty smooth so far, but we have found the bodies of the ship's crew, or rather, what's left of them. What should we do with them? So we could dissect them for a giant pile of society research, or parade them through our cities, which 
I'll admit, is a bit on the ghoulish side. But on the other hand, that provides influence, and influence is what we need to expand, and expansion is what we need to do if we want to lock those bloody rock people out of my corner of space. So, okay, we're going to do the corpse parade, but purely on pragmatic grounds, okay? Not because we enjoy it. Okay, so here's what I wasn't expecting to happen, but, um... It turns out our former masters are not sending a bigger ship to reconquer us. Instead, they're sending us a cocking bill. We've just received an information packet containing a lengthy list of all military assets we destroyed during the Great Liberation War, including casualties and the cost of each destroyed vessel. So our former invaders are demanding war reparations because we took back our freedom and now, oh bloody hell. Okay, so a debt collection agency is going to be in touch to come to an agreement about how much we owe. And they're going to be here in, right, five years. We've got five years to either, yeah, be ready to fight them off or, you know, just save up some money and maybe just try and come up with a payment plan we can maintain for the time being. And I suspect it's going to be that one for now at least. Okay, situation up north is becoming more clear as time goes by and it is not what I originally thought it was, which is uh, I'm not yet stopping the rock people from getting to this area up here. That's where they live. This is where they started, potentially. So yeah, this area they've already got well locked down. But that doesn't mean I can just, yes, get this system and take this bit of space because uh, somebody else lives here too. These guys, still trying to figure out how to speak to them, they're isolationist, they hate me. And the rock people, as we've, uh, yes, very quickly learned, they're isolationist and hate me too. So uh, we've got two hostile powers uh, who don't speak our language uh, right on our border. And to be clear, we still don't have a navy. So probably best we start thinking about, you know, military at some point or another. And in the interim, yeah, just, um... How about we start upgrading the old starport? Just move that in the right direction, because uh, seriously, I feel like sooner or later, somebody's attacking this point. Still, one good thing, we're wrapping up Discovery, meaning I've got an Ascension perk. Nothing complicated, take technological ascendancy, and let's start getting that research faster and faster. And we also have nearby one ocean world. Not ideal, but still, you know, pretty bloody habitable. May as well go settle it rather than not. Okay, we're a year and a half out from the debt collectors showing up, and also we're running into more and more issues with bloody space amoebas blocking my expansion. So, the order's been given, the revenge class corvettes are now in production. Okay, bloody hell, it's taken us 15 years into the game, but we have finally managed to open communications with these bastards next door who most definitely don't want to talk to me. Okay, egalitarian and spiritualist, that could be worse, alright? They didn't want to speak to us, but that's fine, they're not actively xenophobic or anything. Oh yes, the debt collector, sorry, they just kind of uh, snuck up on me a bit there. So, right, they seem... Very reasonable for the time being. They're not expecting the full amount. They want to put together a payment plan. And apparently we owe, um, yes, just under 1.5 million energy credits. Now, I can't really afford that, but to be honest, five grand every 15 years is really not that bad, all things considered. Like, okay, 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 okay. To the market, just sell some minerals. We're swimming in minerals right now. Oh, never mind. They don't actually want paying until... Wow, I was ready to give you the first installment right now. You are terrible debt collectors. Oh, but here we flipping go. The warship. Apparently, we now fully understand that it could be a powerful asset for either war or Here's research. So, okay. Flagship restoration or habitat restoration. I mean, I feel like the responsible option is... Definitely habitat restoration, so we could turn it into a center of learning because knowledge is the greatest weapon of all. But on the other hand, screw that, I want a giant flagship. And while we're waiting on that, the first fleet proper is ready to go. Just 15 corvettes, but bear in mind, yes, there has been fairly recently a pretty major rework into how space combat works to try and make more varied builds a bit more viable and make sure the end game doesn't just descend into, hey, I hope you've got more battleships than me, because otherwise I win. 
And as a result, nukes and various forms of missile boats are now nice and easily accessible. So, yes, basically, nukes are really bloody powerful, but obviously if the enemy's got point defense, they're gonna tear it apart. But guess what doesn't have point defense? That's right, whales! Whales don't have point defense because they're the defenseless completed. space creatures. So basically, screw you, whales. Here we go. The first fight is occurring. The nukes are going in. It's going to take us a while to cut through their beautiful, beautiful armor. They do come with some of that, but the fleet is going very well. We are just at this point nuking the flip out of nature. I think all the babies are dead. Now you're going down. Oh, yeah. Here come the nukes. All the nukes come in. Boom. Flipping beautiful. Right. Now that's more cocking like it. You, lock down the system, science ships, get over here and start figuring out what's going on in the Forbidden Nebula. Okay, maybe we should just, you know, left those guys there as a nice buffer state between me and the Forbidden Nebula. Because that does not sound like good news. Oh, but hello there, sexy. The flagship is ready. Oh, and I can't deny. It is rather fancy. Like, I love how it's got little bits of gold decoration around it. Like it's just a giant art deco spaceship of death. I love it. And that's not the only reason this is a very good day for my empire, which is uh, we've discovered the brand new thing that the entire bloody DLC is named for. A pre-FTL civilization that we can first contact with. So, over here in Turbuk, we have got, yes, yeah, some lovely people in the Steam Age on a lovely tropical world. Feudalism still seems to be going on, lords living inside, yes, yeah, stone palaces, basic urban dwellings, primitive factories and mines and whatnot. Yep, there we go, feudal noble, lovely. So what I'm currently doing is, yes, indeed, throwing up a brand new observation post because this all just changed, all right? It's way more complicated than it used to be. So right now, by default, my policy appears to be aggressive observation because... I don't know. My society's starting point is, well, if the aliens aren't going to screw up our society, I guess we're going to go and screw up some other societies too. So, oh dear, what a tragic cycle we are perpetuating right now. So, we're just routinely studying natives. Uh, live specimens are being taken. Occasionally, we just go and scoop someone up and hope no one notices. The benefit being, in the long run, we might be able to learn some fun technologies from these guys. Because their society might have evolved in very different ways to mine. And at the absolute bare minimum, we're also gaining, yes, a small amount of uh, science as we go along too. Though, what we could do, if we want to make sure we didn't get spotted, is uh, activate cloaking, which is now a technology that exists. Now, I haven't discovered it yet, though my advanced ship that just came in, however, that does have a basic cloaking field generator, which would be more than enough to fool these idiots. So, when we get basic cloaking going on, we can make sure we don't get spotted because we're nice and invisible. Lovely. But yes, as for the station I've just built, it's not invisible. So, we're just going to kind of hope these steam-powered individuals do not at any point look up and notice the giant spaceship there. Or, if they do, they'll come up with some form of, a, I don't know, religious reason why it's there. Like, this is their new god. They shall worship the space station. And at the same time, we can now start, yes, diplomacying them or espionaging them. So, just to get into their society, if we want to, start increasing our awareness of them, spread some disinformation around, marvellous. Though, ooh. Okay, this starts getting complicated fast, which is... If I had gene tailoring, I could, you know, embed myself in their society relatively easily. But unfortunately, I can't do that, so it's going to be a little bit more tricky. We can speed up their technological progress, if that's what I want to do. Shift their ethics towards my own. Lovely. And, ooh. We could infiltrate their government in order to annex the planet and give the locals a large but temporary happiness boost. Which feels like, you know, a thing we shouldn't do. The alternative being, yes, we could just straight up diplomacy with them, or rather, we could choose to if we wish. Because right now their awareness is low, so they do not know what's going on. Though, okay, admittedly it was one at the start of this month, and now it's at three. So, okay, like, the existence of the big floating thing potentially has gone noticed by some people, but they're not too suspicious of it yet. And if we want to, we can just straight up, you know, pop down and say, Hi, we're the aliens, lovely to see you. Feel like we shouldn't do that, might be a bit of a culture shock. 
Right, screw it. I'm sending in a diplomat to go and spy on them. Despite the fact that, um, yes, just to be clear, this is what we look like. And that's what they look like. So, I feel like, yes, given apparently we can't properly gene tailor ourselves, uh, we might struggle a bit to fit in. And while our spy just gets himself embedded, yes, there is a very good number of lovely, lovely, sexy amoeba right here. So, uh, how about we send in our brand new asset to come and deal with it? Though, you know, send them with a bit of support, just in case. But, oh, this is... This is going to be... A lovely, lovely day to my mind. Here we go. The large amoeba are coming in. We are just nuking them. And here comes the giant warship of death, which appears to just be... Oh, it's a carrier craft, isn't it? It's deploying lovely little vessels that are just going around. Oh, life is... Life is good. It's just firing big, worry, dead space lined up beams... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, flippin' yeah. Life is good. Oh, and blimey heck, here we go. The year is 2227, and yes, indeed, we have discovered the Minima Specialized Industries, or can't help but notice there, MSI. So, okay, lads, me and you need to have a nice chat about the debt collectors you've been bloody sending round. Okay, I know I should hate them, but that is a really bloody fancy hat, and I am willing to forgive them if they just share the technology that lets them build hats like that. Seriously, that is a lovely hat, though apparently I'm literally not allowed to forgive them. No friendship with former masters. So, okay, they don't seem either to, you know, haters or likers particularly. They're just doing their own thing, so okay. Now that we've discovered you... There they are over in Alpha Linkus. Let's just send someone over to keep an eye though. Oh, they are very suspicious about us. Okay, bare minimum, let's try and figure out roughly how strong their fleet is. Because I'm guessing really bloody strong. Okay, John, seriously, you need to keep an eye on the calendar. Because the deck collectors occasionally show up and you completely forget about them. But fortunately, I have been floating five grand. So here you go, buddy. No trouble. Oh, hilariously, they're also applying interest to the debt. So, as a result of that, yes, it's possible I'm basically just paying mostly the interest. It's going to take me 30,000 years to actually pay the debt properly. So, uh, okay, marvellous. Okay, small update from our primitive friends, which is, um, yes. So, remember how we kidnapped some of them? Turns out we didn't test the tractor beam before we did that. Instead, it turns out the tractor beam has caused boils, rashes, and uncontrollable sneezing. Doesn't sound so bad. Then, ultimately, the complete dissolution of their outer tissue layers within three hours from their return. A mysterious skin-dissolving illness has become a national health emergency. So, okay, I can see how potentially we've made a bit of a mistake there. But that's fine. We can fix this. Either by... Re-kidnapping them again with the same beam just to see how good it is. Okay, that's that's horrifying, but sure. Or alternatively, we can say, how about we turn the tractor beam down to like, you know, 2 out of 10. That's maybe a bit better. And also, lie low for a while. So, okay, but that means I lose my society research. Then again, it's only 8. Then again, at this point in the game, 8 is actually quite a bit. Or alternatively, turn the tractor beam up to 11 and kidnap them again to see if maybe this skin-dissolving beam's got legs as a weapon. So bloody hell, that's... That's 70% progress towards UV lasers. That's... That's a really nice bit of kit. Then again, actually, you know what? I'm almost done with plasma throwers, so... I feel like I don't really need UV lasers anymore. So in which case, I will take... The society research will just kidnap the people, John. They're literally patient zero in a national health epidemic. It's going to be noticed if every single one of them mysteriously goes missing then again. No. All those stupid idiots will blame the government. Oh no, the feudal lord is kidnapping people. What a monster. Oh yeah, we can just pin all of this on feudalism. Okay, meanwhile, Operation Revenge might potentially have some legs. So these guys are now we've got a spy in place and thus can keep an eye on them. Okay, they're a megacorp, but their fleet is actually not much better than mine. Though bear in mind, like, two-thirds of my fleet is their fleet that we just sort of rebuilt and stole. But still, 
technology is superior and the economy is overwhelming, suggesting should it be necessary, they might be able to put together a bigger fleet or indeed hire mercenaries, etc, etc. We shouldn't just dive in, but... Okay, our revenge potentially has got some legs here. And on top of that, we can access them. They are only like, yeah, one or two empires away. The empire in between is, uh, yes, an incredibly flimsy elective monarchy who possibly has already been a bit beaten up by them, given one of their things is they can just invade you in order to kidnap your pops and put them inside their empire as slaves. So, okay, as long as we maintain good relations with these guys and they like us right now, the borders will stay open. I have access to MSI. Oh, and better and better, it's galactic community time, so okay. If MSI joined the galactic community, I could potentially, yes, keep an eye on what they're doing and what they want in there. And they should also give me good information as to who else is nearby to them. Potential allies we might be able to rope into a war. Oh yeah, our knowledge of the galaxy has suddenly started exploding. So in particular, we've got a nice friendly megacorp down south, who unfortunately, yes, was able to block me off from getting to some nice systems over here. But what can you do? I'm willing to be friends with them, form a commercial pact, because yes, what I want them to do is build outposts on my world. Outposts are mutually beneficial. Like, I want these guys to build their franchises on my planets. Here we go. MSI. So, yeah, right now they are the most uh, influential empire in the galaxy, or at least in the galactic community, because fallen empires don't join the galactic community. These guys do. So, okay. Their business is... Uh, not really fleets. It's pops. It's the economy, though. Pops. That is surprising. Hang about. My pops is 83 weight off pops. So their population is, yeah, good like six times higher than ours. Though much of that may be slaves that they've kidnapped from our other empires. Potentially, yeah, their population isn't that high at all. Oh, and I did not realise this till right this moment, though I could have noticed if I was paying attention. Yes, that lovely megacorp down to the south of me... They've actually got beef with MSI as well. Their empire was started by liberated slaves who took over a slaver ship. So, okay, we might have a friend who can help us out in the eventual war. Lovely. In fact, screw it. I think it's time. Let's activate diplomacy mode. Let's see if we can put together a federation of screw the MSI. Oh, and hello, Saxony. Okay, this may be complete coincidence, but the exact moment I finish research up on the Destroyer... I got an event here, Engineering Insight, suggesting that yes indeed, all of a sudden, I can make my flagship even better. I was wondering about that, because a whole bunch of slots on this thing are just, yeah, empty. So, okay, we can slowly fill it up over time. Okay, I'm increasingly suspicious that this entire FTL observation scheme is being run by the cocking intern, because... Uh, Yes, apparently, once again, we've messed up with the bloody tractor beam. Last time it was turned up too high, so everyone's skin was melted off. This time, it's much too low. So instead of actually abducting them, we just left them in trees and on roofs and diddly diddly dee. So we can fix it, which is going to be really expensive. Or, we can just distribute the footage as a viral video around the Empire... And everyone's going to be delighted. So, okay, we're just going to share footage of the stupid aliens and just keep doing it because it's funny. Beautiful. Oh, and this is just perfect timing. So, we have finally researched how to do cloaking fields ourselves. Right, you here, little buddy, my sign ship. I would like you to become cloaked. He is now invisible to everyone aside from people who have sufficient visibility set to their ships or outposts or what have you. But the advantage of an invisible ship is it gets to ignore border closures. Alright, these guys over here, they're not allowing me into their borders. But they have no way of detecting this guy apparently, so therefore he can go in. Though if they do detect him, he will be immediately kicked out. And as a result of that, these guys make excellent spies. So what we're going to do here is, uh, yes, conduct active reconnaissance on MSI. Because our spy's not been able to figure out too much. Like, we've got the basics down, but we don't know what's going on with the population. For example, how many defensive armies are waiting for us. Uh, if we want to move in and figure out, yeah, what the actual real deal with these guys is, uh, we're going to be needing to do some active reconnaissance, which, yes, cloaked science vessels are particularly good at. 
Oh, hello sexy. 4,300 strength by itself. All its weapons go up to, uh, yes, level 2. They're still using level 1 basic strike craft. Picked up a bunch of armor. Picked up a bunch of uh, shielding. Double afterburners. So, oh bloody hell. Right, now that. That should potentially turn the tables. The year is 2241. And a great tragedy has befallen our empire. Jeff Goldblum has passed away at the age of 90, leaving engineering without a scientist. I am... I'm shocked, appalled, and saddened by this turn of events. Okay, the year is 2244, and things are about to start happening very, very fast indeed, which is, number one, we are ready to potentially form a federation. And my lovely skeleton in spacesuit friends next door who have been super chill this entire time, they are 100% ready to form a military alliance called Let's Kill MSI. Down south, meanwhile, yes, that's not a federation, and my former buddies of the Broken Shackles origin, they decided to, yes, become subjects to civilian dynamics over here. And bloody hell, they are immediately ready to jump straight into a proper full-on federation, and presumably they would be pulling their buddies in with them R. Oh. Okay, now this, this is a lovely friendly galaxy. This is going very well. And at the exact moment that we're putting together a grand coalition of half of the galaxy, MSI are not necessarily doing so hot. Because this territory definitely used to belong to them, but now it belongs to the Ron Zaren Enlightened Kingdom rebelled against MSI. Now, by any chance of you guys are... You are still at war. There is currently an uprising going on. So MSI are distracted. And uh, I just want to give them a bit of a kick. So I do have, you know, special things I can do. I can end the threat with payback. Basically just, you know, fighting to the death. I can fight to make them into my tributary. So, you know, that would be hilarious. But in both cases, status quo is not allowed. Either you win absolutely, or lose absolutely. So, that's not what I want to do. I just want to pick a tiny part of them off. So, all I need to do is get a claim down, and I can do that. And what's even funnier is, yes, it happens to be 2245, meaning in about a month's time, these bastards are going to come over to me and expect payment. Because I suspect I might be able to trick them into coming to me, meaning I'll have my defences on my side too. You know what? Funny old thing, you mysterious debt-collecting bastards. I've decided I won't pay. Okay, so it turns out that they were actually, um, yes, already here, actually at Sol, which... Okay, just maybe everybody turn around. I kind of assumed they'd be coming from MSI, but no. No, it turns out not. It turns out they're actually, um, they're at Sol. So everybody just pop back to Sol, because it turns out that's, that's where these individuals are, and it's not where we are, which is, oh, well, this is. This is bloody embarrassing. Apparently they just sort of, uh, yeah, walked straight into our territory, and now they're probably about to start bombing. Okay, they're bombing Earth right now, so if we could maybe just uh, get back here nice and fast. I mean, we can definitely deal with them. That's absolutely fine. This is not a strong fleet, but Earth is currently being just slightly bombed at the moment. Though, on the plus side, we're also gaining, a, yes, a lovely corporate holding, so that's nice. So just in you come. In just a moment, we should be ready to begin the attack. Action Earth has underway. barely taken any damage at all. In comes, oh yeah, my plasma rifles are, are ready, by the way. So, oh dear. Oh, flippy dear, as soon as the shields go down, their armor and hull is going to cocking melts. So, there we flippy go. The deck collectors will apparently be back later, but I have not had to pay on this occasion. Lovely. Okay, it's flipping time. So, 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 so. All I want, buddy, is one tiny system that possibly my allies would like something too. Now, just make sure everyone is planning to vote as they should do. And yes, yes, and boom. We're on board, but by the looks of it, yes. These guys up here, I wasn't sure what was going to be in their contract because you work for MSI, you stupid bastards. And that means, yes, unfortunately, this was a defensive war. They got pulled into it. So 
deploy forces at north at to this area. We need to break this fleet before we actually invade. You guys just hold off for the time being. Their other allies are, yeah, I'm pretty sure significantly further away on the far side of them. So it's going to take them a lot longer to show up if they even bother doing so. But yeah, for the time being, I've also got reinforcements coming from this direction. So that's going to be fine. Oh yeah, they're moving in. They're planning to backstab me. What a bunch of decks. All right, working for MSI. Complete. Who would do such a thing? Now, I do have a pretty decent station right here ready to defend. So they're going to be moving in, but... We'll be moving in to reinforce momentarily. We'll be fine. Even if they are able to knock out the spaceport before most of my forces actually get into play, it kind of doesn't matter because, yeah, action. the space station will significantly soften them up. So it's going to take them a while to get past the armor and whatnot. This will do a decent enough job. Oh, and here comes the bloody Ship of Doom. So, okay, now you guys are being shot by my various little craft we're sending in. And here come the real killers, and now they're running. As you bloody well should do, they weren't even able to take out all of this. Okay, so they basically abandoned the fight as soon as they realized how much they were up against, which is fine. That means we can chase them down and finish them off. Just, you know, knock them straight out of the fight immediately. And while that's going on, okay, my allies have already moved into position to take out the base. They shouldn't have done. They are not strong enough to do so. Guys, why did you do this? This this was a very stupid decision. And there we go. Now something much better showed up. So, okay, we haven't actually involved these guys in the war. But yes, these are the rebels. And now they've just shown up to assist. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Thank you. In fact, bloody hell, the forces of MSI are being annihilated by the rebels. They're just going around doing their own thing. And also, they appear to be bombing this world that I was planning to go and take over. So, ah, oh, Okay, this is going very well. I don't even need to be involved in this. We're going to win kind of by default. Okay, good news and bad news. The bastards who sided with MSI, they've now been eliminated. I've occupied their entire space. There's no chance they could cause any trouble for me. Which means this is the only front in the war. However, yes indeed. Unfortunately, this has given them enough time to put together a secondary fleet. I could deal with it, but my fleet's now currently way out of position, and these guys won't be able to. So, okay, you guys just hold on as best you can. The problem's going to be getting something out of this war, because, uh, yes, unfortunately, the bloody Enlightened Kingdom Uprising keeps taking all the territories that I would like to take. Ah, but hang on. I think that war might literally just have ended. So as a result of that, okay. What's actually left at this point? Because yes, now we can figure out what I do and don't want to take. Because all I want is a planet, okay? I just want a planet of yours so we've got access to some of your people. So that we can teach you how it bloody feels. And I think this guy over here could be just the flipping ticket. I should be able to afford that, right? Gosh darn it, my war ally wants that one. So, okay, we can't have that one. I've already claimed this one, except hang about. This is currently claimed in order of strength by Polysimus Primus. Okay, they're not involved. Uh, then, okay, I'm apparently, yes, last place. So I won't be able to bloody hell. Okay, what if I go and get Alpha Linkus? Okay, I'm going to go get Alpha Linkus. It's going to be fine. I just want bloody something, all right? Okay, forces are now gathering at the border. My main forces, yeah, about, uh, what is that? 13 odd thousand strong are in play, and a whole bunch of other forces are sort of nearby. I think we're ready to start pushing in. And it looks to me like they're no putting all their strength over onto, yeah, this side. They want to invade over here. That's fine. Honestly, I am very happy to just take this planet, and maybe if we're lucky, this immediate local area... And then settle the status quo. Okay, war score is 100%. We're basically going to be forced to make peace. I'm not 100% sure what's about to happen. But yes, we're going to get something. The guys next door, they're going to get something. I think we're getting some of this too. I guess we'll bloody find out, really. Okay, so. So, 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 so. This is, oh, cock me. I've made a messy piece here. So, um, yes, I've seized part of the rock territory. Because those dicks picked the wrong side. Uh, meanwhile, yes, the rebellion got like some stuff. You held on to this. I'm not even sure how you held on to that, but whatever. You got this 
and I got Alpha Linkus. So, yes, um, that's, that's a planet I own now. We had to bomb it a bit, so it's a little bit broken. Oh, but cock me, look who lives here. It's humans. It's huge numbers of humans. Right, this is... This is where my people were. These are my people, right? So, hello there. And now we just, uh, make some changes to the rights that these bastards and their lovely hats get inside my empire. So, okay, good. We made them slaves by default. That's fine. Decent conditions, you say? No, 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 no. Just enough to keep them alive. That's fine. And yes, this one sounds good. Domestic servitude. So, they can basically, you know, keep on doing various jobs. We can have them in the mines, etc. But, if they've got nothing else to do, they just become servants. Dancing for my cocking entertainment. So, that's why you don't enslave people, lads. Because sometimes the slaves are going to rise up and then you're going to be the slaves. And maybe they're going to treat you even cocking worse. One of you can head over to Earth and be in the mines, lovely. Then over to the lovely oceany new Earth, you can be- Oh blimey, hang on, are we- Why have we enslaved these guys? We like these guys, stop enslaving them! Okay, I've just had a poke around the, um, yes, Federation. Turns out several of us are actually slavers, so... Okay, I didn't mean to do this, but I've kind of replaced one small slaver empire with- uh, a giant militant slaver federation that is now poised to conquer half the galaxy. So, in conclusion, it turns out I was the bad guy all along. That's Dolores' first contact, loads of fun new first contact events, cloaking, which is absolutely cooking hilarious, and some really fun, interesting origins to add a bit of flavor and diversity to the galaxy. So, uh, I mean, you can't say fairer than that. I love Stellaris. Stellaris is great and it just keeps on getting better and uh, I don't have any immediate plans uh, for a full series, but at some point, I am sure, when we get one of the big game-changing expansions, uh, oh yeah, we'll see this back. So, uh, hopefully, you are looking forward uh, to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris with First Contact. Thank you very much and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs>